Welcome to Mexico Unexplained, where we will explore the magic, the mysteries, and the miracles of Mexico. This series presents information based partly on theory and conjecture. The podcaster's purpose is to suggest some possible explanation, but not necessarily the only ones to the subjects we will examine. Here is your host, Robert Bitto. Welcome. And muy bienvenidos to episode number 344 of Mexico Unexplained, where we examine the magic, the mysteries, and the miracles of Mexico. I'm your host, Robert Bitto. In the year 2006, archaeologists with Mexico's National Institute of Anthropology and History were digging at the Templo Mayor in the heart of Mexico City when they uncovered a significant monolith. On it was carved the image of a goddess holding a rabbit with ten dots on her right foot. Scholars interpreted this to mean the year Ten Rabbit, or the year 1502 in the Western calendar. This was an important year for the Aztecs, as it was when their beloved emperor, Ahuizot, passed away. Researchers thought that perhaps the carved stone meant that the famous leader's tomb was nearby. Archaeologists began using ground-penetrating radar and in a few months discovered the location of a tomb they suspected was there. If this were the tomb of Ahuizot, it would be the first time in history a royal Aztec burial was ever discovered. Excavation of this tomb only began in 2019, which was the 500th anniversary year of Cortes' march on the Aztec capital of Tenochtitlan that marked the beginning of the end of the Aztec Empire. In this large stone box, archaeologists found jaguar bones and the bones of a young boy, who at the time of his death, at around age nine, was clothed to look like Huitzilopochtli, the Aztec god of war. The boy was wearing a jade necklace and had on what was a cape or wings made from the bones of hawks. On what would have been the back of the jaguar, they found an intricately carved wooden medallion, possibly also dedicated to the war god. Beneath the bones of the child and the jaguar were the bones of a rosate spoonbill, a bird from the flamingo family, long associated with Aztec warriors and the Tenochtitlan nobility. Alongside these curious finds in the sarcophagus were seashells and pieces of coral which came from the coastal waters of the Yucatan and Belize almost a thousand miles away. Researchers believe that the location of this tomb was once part of a circular ritual platform which stood in front of the twin pyramids that made up what is now called the Templo Mayor. According to accounts made by members of Cortes' entourage at the time of the conquest, Aztec priests deposited the cremated remains of the Aztec emperors in this circular stone platform along with elaborate offerings. By the time of the COVID-19 quarantines and lockdowns, only a little more than 10% of the tomb had been excavated and studied. At the recording of this podcast, excavation of this important discovery has not yet resumed. The world is left hanging with a huge question. Did archaeologists discover the final resting place of the great emperor Awisot? In the time before that question can be answered, perhaps we can ask another important question. Who was Awisot? The future emperor was born at the royal palace in Tenochtitlan sometime in the late 1460s. He was named after the legendary lake monster said to have inhabited Lake Texcoco. For more information about this Mexican cryptid, please see Mexico Unexplained episode number 89. Awisot's mother was Princess Atototzli, sometimes referred to in the history books as Huitzil Xochitzin. The princess was the daughter of Montezuma I, who was the second Aztec emperor and the fifth king of Tenochtitlan. Through her mother, the princess was descended from the ruling family of the kingdom of Kwaun Nahuac, which was later renamed Cuernavaca. Awisot's father was Tesosomoc, whose father was Aztec Emperor Itzcoatl. During his lifetime, 
While technically the leader of the Aztecs, Tesosomoc never assumed the title of emperor or Tlatoani because his wife outranked him by blood. In this complicated household, Awisot was the third of three brothers. His older brothers were Ashayakat and Tisok, who both became Aztec emperors. Awisot also had a sister, whose Aztec name, Chalchiu Nenentzin, in English means noble jade doll. Chalchiu Nenentzin rose from the rank of princess to that of queen when she married the king of Tlatelolco, a wealthy and powerful man named Mokihish. History records Awisot's sister as being very tall and very slender, much like a supermodel of today. Apparently, the king of Tlatelolco treated Awisot's sister terribly, and this was one of the reasons why their older brother, Ashayakat, when he was Aztec emperor, conquered the kingdom of Tlatelolco and executed King Mokihish. This conquest happened in the year 1473 when Awisot was still a boy. As a young man, the future emperor Awisot experienced the drama of his extended family and all of the intrigues of court life at the Aztec capital of Tenochtitlan. In the year 1480, Awisot's older brother, Emperor Ashayakat, became seriously ill and died the next year. The second of the three brothers, Tisok, then became emperor of the Aztecs in 1481. Tisok had a short reign, only five years, but during that time he accomplished a great deal. The Aztecs conquered and incorporated 14 different independent kingdoms into their empire, and construction began on the Templo Mayor. Some sources describe Tisok as sickly and use this as a reason why he passed away at a young age. Others claim that Tisok was poisoned to make way for the younger brother Awisot to assume the title of Tlatoani and rule over the vast Aztec Empire. Awisot became emperor in the year 7 Rabbit, or 1486. Some sources say that he was about 17 or 18 years old when he was declared the supreme ruler of the Aztecs. It is assumed that as a boy he participated in some of the military campaigns of his older brothers and was skilled in the art of war. Some history books even declare Awisot to be the greatest military commander who ever lived in the ancient Americas. This young emperor's warrior sensibilities were so fine-tuned that the Aztec Empire almost doubled in size during Awisot's reign. Within months of assuming power, the young emperor had his first test. A quasi-tributary state associated with the Aztec Empire, the Huastec Kingdom, rebelled against royal authority and stopped sending tribute to Tenochtitlan. Ahuizot led a massive army to the northern frontier and not only crushed the rebellion, but he also incorporated all territories of the Huastecs into the Aztec Empire. This expanded the Aztec realm far to the north into what is now the modern Mexican state of Tamaulipas. The Huastecs had been a buffer state between the Aztecs and the warlike and nomadic Chichimeca people discussed in Mexico Unexplained, episode number 142. After conquering the Huastecs, the armies of the Aztecs were faced with confronting the Chichimeca directly on their northern frontier. When Ahuizot returned to Tenochtitlan, victorious in his campaign against the Huastecs, he got to work on finishing the improvements to the capital city that his brother, Emperor Tisok, had started. The most significant of these projects was the expansion of the Templo Mayor, which was finished within the first two years of Ahuizot's reign. Another major project was the building of a canal and aqueduct system that would bring fresh water to Tenochtitlan from Coyoacan. This water delivery system almost worked too well, as it brought so much fresh water to the heart of the capital city that it caused flooding. Priests and others blamed the flooding on the fact that Awisot had killed the king of Coyoacan, and this was the revenge of the gods. Whatever the reason for the overabundance of water, 
Aztec engineers figured out the problem and managed to ensure a steady and controllable flow of fresh water to quench the thirst of an ever-growing Tenochtitlan. After the conquests of the north, Ahuizot looked to the south. For many years, the Aztecs had influence over the rich land located near the present-day border of Mexico and Guatemala, called Choconochco, or Soconusco, and was connected to this far-flung territory by time-worn overland trade routes. Ahuizot sent his armies almost 800 miles to this remote area to conquer it and establish permanent Aztec forts and settlements there. For more details about Ahuizot's conquest of Xoconochco, please see Mexico Unexplained episode number 162. During his reign, Ahuizot also conquered the Mixtecs and Zapotecs. In addition, he skirted around the Tarascan Empire, subjugating the small kingdoms to the south of the Tarascans, and thus pushed the Aztec Empire to the Pacific coast. Ahuizot's armies had many minor border wars and skirmishes with the military of the Tarascan state, but like the Chichimeca, the Aztecs never conquered the Tarascans. As a result of all this conquest and subjugation, not only did the territory of the Aztec Empire double under Ahuizot, but the wealth from these various conquered regions also poured into the Aztec capital thus making the city incredibly wealthy. The rulers used the wealth for more civic improvements to Tenochtitlan, including grander temples and other monumental public works projects. Things like art and poetry flourished in the Aztec capital. Historians often refer to Ahuizot's reign as the Aztec Golden Age. It is important to note that while many people may glorify this time in ancient Mexican history, and many Mexican Americans in particular may feel a sense of pride in this Aztec past, like many empires the world over, the glory days were the result of colonization, exploitation, and subjugation of other peoples. While the streets of Tenochtitlan bloomed with an overabundance of flowers from perfectly manicured hanging gardens, in other parts of the empire, villages were scrounging around desperately to meet the demands of the Aztec tax collectors or face imminent death. History is always more complex and nuanced than most people think. Emperor Ahuizot left behind quite a legacy when he died in the year 10 Rabbit, or 1502 on the Western calendar. There are conflicting stories as to how this famous Aztec ruler died. Some believe he was poisoned, but that is a common reason cited for death among many of the Aztec leaders, including Ahuizot's own brother Tizoc. In another story, which is the one more preferred by historians, Tenochtitlan was undergoing some minor flooding, and unknown to Emperor Ahuizot, some of the floors of the imperial palace were covered in small amounts of water. The emperor supposedly slipped on a wet floor and hit his head on a stone lintel, killing him instantly. He was barely in his early forties when he passed. Although he had two sons and a daughter, in 1502 the title of Tlatoani, or emperor, passed to his nephew, who would rule under the name of Montezuma II. Seventeen years into his reign, this unlucky nephew would have the misfortune of being on the throne when the Spanish arrived. One can only wonder what would have happened to the Aztecs if Emperor Ahuizot hadn't slipped on the wet floor on that fateful day in 1502. It would have been quite possible that Cortes would have been dealing with a wiser and more seasoned Ahuizot, who would have been in his late fifties, instead of his nephew Montezuma. Would the outcome have been any different? We will leave that to the theoretical historians and the daydreamers. 
Thank you once again for listening to another episode of Mexico Unexplained. Remember to like and subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us on Twitter. Tell your friends by sharing these shows with others. Please go to our website, MexicoUnexplained.com, for references, illustrations, and for free access to transcripts of past shows. Please visit Amazon.com to purchase the books, Mexico Unexplained and Mexican Monsters, to get hard copies of The Magic, The Mysteries, and The Miracles of Mexico. We appreciate your kind attention once again. Until next time, thank you and gracias. Thank you for listening to another episode of Mexico Unexplained with host Robert Bitto. For show summary, relevant links and commentary, please check out our website at MexicoUnexplained.com. Like us on Facebook and be a part of the conversation. Adios and hasta la vista.